and welcome to the Council on Aging's first men's breakfast of the season. I'd like to welcome you, thank you for coming. We'd especially like to thank Bill Burt for joining us this morning. He's going to talk about sports. <laughs> journalist, for, journalist for the Eagle Tribune um, and a, a, a good-natured, happy answerer of questions. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Bill. Thank you. Hold the pause for later. <laughs> Nisha, you want to say something? Ah, uh, she's good. Okay. <laughs> okay, everybody. So, um, last time I was here, I heard it was April, beginning of the Red Sox season. Now, I will get into the Red Sox because we, uh, how many guys stayed up till 16 to 1? Oh, so you guys like rubbing it in then. You knew at 10 to 1 it was over. You wanted to see the end. All right, because it's the Yankees. So, a few of you have asked me, and so you, you understand, uh, you know, sort of my family situation, <laughs> yeah. which is related to this series. So, last time I was here, was, I, I've talked about, I probably have talked about it since Little League. Um, you know, my son played baseball. Uh, we, we went to the Little League World Series five different times in Williamsport, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Uh, our best vacations were the Little League World Series to this day. Now, it was just my son my wife and myself. And so we still talk about it. Um, but I think it, it also tells a little about my son, his passion for sports, but baseball. So he goes on, goes to St. John's Prep. <coughs> Dynasty, roughly, in baseball, but probably the best program in the state. When, when he was a junior, there were nine players on the team that went Division I. Wow. You know, that's, that's like eight more than normal. <laughs> and. Uh, <coughs> And then his senior year, there was about five or six. Um, and he ended up, he in high school said, I want to play pro baseball. <clears throat> so um, that's what he said. Just like all of us said the same thing. <laughs> yep. So uh, his thing was always probably a little better than a few of us. And uh, so he goes to St. John's Prep, waiting for offers, never really got them had interest, a little interest, more Division three schools. I drove him up to Bates, a uh, coach from Bates who was a really good coach, went for the Harvard job, didn't get it, but stayed at Bates. So I, we go up there and visit, and uh, he basically offered him on the visit. You can come, you're all set, I looked at your grades, okay? And it was like, this is our first place that we'd gone to. And so he, um, we said, all right, we're just gonna, we're gonna go through the process a little bit, look at schools. And I loved Bates. We went to a football game, we walked around. But uh, while we're driving home, he gets in the car and I go, so what do you think? He goes, no. <laughs> he goes, I want to go to a bigger school. I want to play Division One baseball. So it was there that I really realized, because he had, hadn't got a lot of interest. Uh, <clears throat> so we, uh, I then said, all right, so we're going to focus on Division One schools. And l long story short, we went. Um, a couple schools got involved. He planned to go because he didn't get any offers, and he was young on the young. He was the youngest senior at St. John's Prep. He didn't get any offers, so we decided to go to prep school. So we go to so in, so the prep school route. Uh, Phillips Exeter basically says, "You're our number one baseball recruit and our number one basketball recruit for one year, PG." And it's Phillips Exeter. You get a degree, and if you graduate as a um, as a PG, you get a degree from the school. So oh. St. John's Prep, Phillips Exeter, you know, you're going to be, you're going places. <clears throat> well, when they deliver the, uh, we, so we didn't look at other schools. We just said, that's what they told us. And uh, lo and behold, they send out the acceptances and we get waitlisted. <laughs> so he calls me on the way to school. It must have been sent to his phone. And so all hell breaks loose in our, in our family. There's only three of us. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And um, as I told you before, and I, maybe I, I'm one of seven kids, the oldest of seven, and you know, I've gone into that every year. Maybe I'll go into it again. But we, uh, <clears throat> so we go through our routine, and he goes to prep school. Uh, we we had committed to um, oh, this. This is the great story. So he goes to St. John's Prep, which is all boys. And so, when we were talking about prep schools, I said Salisbury School, which is in Salisbury, Connecticut right over the mass line. And one of his buddies from St. John's Prep was going there. Father said it was the best place, brought home the brochures. It's in the middle of nowhere. 
in the like the, in the middle of these four mountains there's a school <clears throat> so <clears throat> I said let's go and it's there was this one issue it's an all boys school and he goes dad I'm not going to an all boys school I'm done <laughs> and I understood that I understood and so uh, but then we go back to the process that was early in the process so he didn't even want to visit I just wanted to visit <clears throat> three hour drive no so then we get back the note from Phillips Exeter, and then we got to open our search again, so we drive out there. And we're literally walking around campus, and you know, five minutes onto his walk, he says, I love this place. And I wanted to choke him, because that's where I wanted to go, you know, initially, because I wanted to go visit. And the all-boy thing was, he got over it. So we visited another school, three schools, <clears throat> all of them wanted him, but it was late in the process because we already applied. And lo and behold, he gets into, uh, and they gave us a good amount of money, Avon Old Farms. But North, our baseball season at North at, uh, St. John's Prep is midway. We're in the latter part of the season. We're number one in the state. He's captain of the team, and he's one of the best players. And he's a senior, but that's too late to get recruited for baseball. You've got to get recruited as a junior. The Northeastern coach uh, basically offers him a scholarship on Memorial Day of his senior year. Wow. <clears throat> when we had already committed to Avon Oak Farms, but I, it's, this is a great story, I called the coach from Northeastern, who I knew they were interested, and I said, all right, you guys gotta make your offer, because we have to make a payment to Avon Oak Farms. They want our money, they've been bugging me. <clears throat> and so I was gonna drive down and drop it off. It's like $7,000, and the, um, <clears throat> So I called the coach, and he said, all right, uh, I'll meet you guys. I'm at Lake Winnipesaukee with my family. I'll meet you on the way back at, um, at a coffee shop in Reading, Starbucks in Reading. So we meet Memorial Day. It's Monday, Memorial Day. We're not sure how it's going to go. And he, uh, he offers him a scholarship. And for my son, the, the key was, what do you, uh, my son wanted the opportunity to start. That's, that's the only thing you wanted. Now, starting in Division One baseball is, it happens, but it's 10% it's of freshmen start. And he wanted the opportunity, he was like stressing that. And, uh, and I, I told him before, I go, hey, just relax on that. He goes, I just want the opportunity. And if I play better, will I start? And he's a late recruit, so sometimes you think of the late guys, he wasn't getting a lot of money, they get pushed back aside. And he said, you will, if you're as good as you think you are, he said to him, you'll have the opportunity. So we get in the car, and I said, okay. He goes, nope, I'm going to Northeastern. And I said, whoa, 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 whoa. He goes, no, 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 it's my decision. It's my decision. You said it was my decision. And so we're having a little fight in the car outside of this. <laughs> and he said, I said, hey, hey, let's just talk this through. Mm -hmm. We got money at the prep school. And he didn't want to go to this prep school. It, it, um, it was... It was too academic for him at this point. He'd already graduated high school. It was more, our prep school thing was just do a year, just to kill a year to get ready for Division One. I. I think he needed to mature a little bit because he was on the young side. So he, he literally, he's a stubborn kid, which is why he's probably good. But he, uh, in the car there, he, he, he wouldn't let me get my, I just, I'm trying to like lessen it. Nope, I'm going, done, you said it was my decision. We, next thing in the morning, he calls the coach and he goes to Northeastern. So, what happens at Northeastern? In a nutshell, he starts his first game as a freshman and is the only player in 90 years to start every single game for four years. So, he ended up had a very good career. So, the last time I was here was April. He was a senior. I, I was in between. I probably, I, I traveled, they played 57 games. I saw 53 of them. Uh, yes. Um, we're hurting for money right now if you guys want to donate. Get, like, <laughs> <laughs> so we, um, yeah, but when he makes it big. Well, that's a whole He'll cover issue. everything for That's you. another <laughs> issue. So I've already talked to him about that. <laughs> so we go. <laughs> yeah. So. The year, uh, and up Northeastern has this year, its best year, the past year it's ever had, it's had in 20 years. Uh, go to the NCAA, win the conference title. We, they're in a new conference that never won it before. We, we won it. 
We go to the NCAA tournament, barely made it. One of the last picks, but they went absolutely crazy. It's one of the, honestly, the best moment of the year was them celebrating to go to the tournament. We ended up going to North Carolina State. We had lost, ended up losing two games, but, uh, but we beat Auburn during the year. Great game. They were undefeated 15-0. and They would beaten us two games. We win the last game 2-1. to one. In fact, my son made a diving play at short, <coughs> threw a kid out at home plate, and uh, the year was incredible. So now comes the draft. The draft is interesting. So we, <coughs> and I didn't mean to get into this, but this is a sort of interesting yeah, but story. Your son got a hit against the Red Sox, too. Yes. Well, I he played saw the, it. I know, I saw he it. He played the Red Sox <laughs> to begin the season. Northeastern's got a thing with the Red Sox. They play... The Red Sox' first exhibition game down in Florida is against Northeastern. Sometimes BC, but it's always Northeastern. And uh, yeah, he did. He hit a double down the right field line, knocked in a run against the pitcher Jalen Beeks, who they traded for Evaldi. Evaldi. Yeah. So um, we'll get into that. But he, so the bottom line was great year, great career. He always sort of knew. He, he, there's a, he's got a confidence in a, in a, that, that I, I wish I had uh, in a drive. And he got better. He was a two-year, ca two-time captain. But look, the key was the draft. That was everything. Didn't get drafted as a junior. Now, he played down the Cape, which is very good baseball, for two summers. His junior, his sophomore year, after his sophomore year, after his junior year. So he's a senior now. He's done. We just got eliminated. The draft is in three days. And um, we're thinking 10, 11 round, 10, 11th round. Uh, he's been, he had five or six teams really into him. Uh, so we're at our house, and the, the MLB draft, the last two days, so it's the first round, then it's second and third, and then it's like four through 40, the, the last day. And it's by computer. So we plugged the, the, the computer into our big TV, and we knew he was going to be the third day. And the picks come up one by one by name. You can see it. They, they say it after it happens, but the name pops up. So that's how you find out if you're drafted. So we're thinking 10, 11, 12, 13. That's what Seattle told us. Lo and behold, 13, 14, wow. nothing. And so it's me, my wife, and my son. So and we got a pretty big house. So we got, we got a couple of stations here. We got... Our family room, big TV, my office. Um, I had a computer upstairs, and then my son uh, with his phone. So he's with me, and then my my wife was working, but she came home. My wife's brother came over. Uh, he had been. Uh, he doesn't live here anymore. He's visiting um, his, my mother-in-law, and he comes by the house, and it's it's. I said, John, you've got to get out of here. This yeah. is like. This is high stress. It's not, hey, Uncle John, how are you? How's life? We don't care. Okay? <laughs> so, so he leaves, and I said, John, don't take this personal. He, this is stressful right now. <laughs> Baseball is a stressful sport. The highs and lows, the 0 for 6s, the 3Ks. You know, it's not like hoop, basketball, or hockey. You take baseball. It's like, I think baseball and golf are the same. You take it home with you. And at least for a while, you get real cranky. And so we're going through with 13, 14, 15. Now, he has an agent who's talking to teams. Now, his agent has five or six guys. They call it agent. It's called an advisor before you get drafted. And he's in touch with teams, and he's checking us. Hey, don't worry. Seattle told me they're interested. Yankees are interested. Red Sox are interested. So some, one, someone's going to grab you. So we're up to around 21, 22. <laughs> and, you know, the story about Brady. Yeah. You know, he walked outside, brought a baseball bat. So um, my son is flipping out. Max is his name. And he, at round 22, we're watching. And he goes, I'm not going to get drafted. He goes, I'm out of here. He leaves and drives the car away. And I go, I don't know where, the, where he's going. The Tobin Bridge, thankfully, is in, like an hour away from us. <laughs> but he leaves. Now he's got his phone with him, so he's watching the draft. And, uh, he had to drive away. He's losing his mind. It's. It, I'm telling you, Tom Brady did not go. Th was didn't go through anything worse than my son went through. So we get to rounds 25, 26, and now it's real fear. Like, you know what? Maybe this isn't going to happen. And uh, even though team, he. I mean, he's had 
so many scouts watch him, interview him, fill out questionnaires. And then at round 28, we're thinking the Red Sox. And lo and behold, so my son is outside, I'm upstairs, and my wife is in downstairs. So we're at three different spots, and it's Max Burke, New York Yankees. So I got a little chill, uh, and screams, three separate screams. And, uh, and then he starts, well, she starts crying, because she cries at everything. Uh, he's sort of crying. And I'm not crying, but I'm getting there. And uh, it was like we had the circle at the bottom of the stairs, so we all met. And uh, you know, this was the day he had been working for for five years. So that's this was not just he got drafted. This was you were you were worried about your college career because you're worried about this day. And um, and it happened. And uh, lo and behold, we heard. The Yankees drafted him. Now he's got a Yankee scout who had taken him out, said, I love you, Max, you're the kind of guy we want. The Red Sox scout said the same thing a month earlier. What we heard was the Red Sox were four picks later and they were gonna they had told his agent, we're drafting Max. So it was between four picks mm -hmm. and he went to the Yankees instead of the Red Sox. So two days later, goes to Tampa, is in Tampa for two weeks working out. They sent him to the Rookie League, the Appalachian League, Pulaski, Virginia. Anyone ever hear, been down or here in Pulaski, Virginia? It's in the middle of nowhere. So Route 81, which is the route that runs from yeah. Wilkes-Barre down to wherever, um, it's just off of 81, and it's a, it's a, uh, it's a dead, honestly, a, it's a sad, dead southern city, which 25, 30 years ago, 20,000 people, bustling, business, furniture. I guess that's the furniture area, North Carolina, Virginia. Biggest furniture, one of the most uh, biggest producers of furniture in the world was this area. Pulaski, uh, Dublin, there's a couple cities. And, uh, but a, they built a beautiful stadium. The Yankees moved in there three years ago. And the owner of the team built a hotel. He took an old building, made a hotel. So they lived at a five-star hotel, which was eight, nine-tenths of a mile from the stadium, in a beautiful backdrop of the Appalachian Mountains. It's the Appalachian League, Johnson City, Eth uh, Elizabethton, um, um, Tennessee, North Carolina, Virginia, and it's all across the, all of these mountains. So I went down four different times. I uh, had the time of my life. Reggie Jackson came down. Reggie Jackson came down for two days. Uh, so I saw Reggie the other day, and I, I gave him a test. He was here, I, I was at the, the, uh, the game on Friday, Red Sox-Yankees. And I see him walk through, I go, Reggie. Now, he, he saw him, he, he met me down there in Pulaski when he came, I was, I was there. I go, Reggie, I got a question for you. He goes, what? I said, Max Burt. And he looks at me. He goes, yeah, I love that kid. I love that kid. He's, he's, he's a player. He's, he's, got, he's got something. I said, all right, that's my son. He goes, oh, yeah, I remember you. You were a little bit of a pain in the neck there that first day. <laughs> Call me around. So I said, I'm sorry about that. Um, so for us, incredible experience. Uh, he's, so, so now, <laughs> what do we do? The Red Sox are playing the Yankees. I got like 20 texts. Who are you rooting for? <laughs> and I will say, and my son is in this as well. I mean, he's got, a, he's got Yankee hats. You don't need Red Sox hats anymore, at least with them. But he said he still likes Mook, Mookie's his favorite player. Um, Pedroia, it's hard. He said, so we're still at the beginning of this. And for me, I'm objective, quote unquote. Uh, yeah, sure. But I, I still, I'm, I'm not probably there yet. The Yankee thing. I mean, if the Yankees win, I guess I'll be rooting for them. But uh, I still, you know, look at things from Red Sox colored glasses. And um, so I think my son is going to go Thursday. He's invited by the Yankees, and he's going to go to stand around and batting practice. Uh, and so I'm, I'm thinking that's going to have a big effect on him, being around Aaron Judge and a couple other guys at the dugout, Yankee dugout with a Yankee hat. The scout that drafted him, 
from Boston area is going to take him to the game. That's so, assuming there's a game on Thursday. Ooh, that's a good call. That's a good call. If the, and you know what? I don't think there's going to. I don't think there's going to be a game. I think it's over. I think. Uh, uh, so let's go to current. Um, what happened? Uh, at, when it was one-one, the Yankees were already celebrating. Their fans were already celebrating. And it's the only thing I've said was, I agree, the bullpen is horrendous. Um, Mookie hadn't looked good, you know. But this team, if you watch this team, and we did, we all did, uh, I, I, I'm, they were automatic. I mean, I, it's like a couple bad games, they bounce back. This team always answered. And uh, this is where Alex Cora comes in. And I, this is where Aaron Boone is learning a hard lesson. So last night, Aaron Boone, third inning, you know, their, their, their starting pitcher, Severino, starting to blow up. He brings in a starter who they acquired, you know, a month to a month and a half ago. No, he treated it like, all right, we're going we're gonna to try to do this and maybe it'll work. Where if you go back the day before, uh, Cora pulled Price. He didn't wait till it was too late. Because Price was probably surprised. I'm David Price. What are you pulling? No, we're not doing this. And and they, the irony was that first, that second game, they made a little comeback here, and they held the. The key is it's not giving up the runs. The key is keeping the game close, and allowing your offense, which is this is the best offense in my opinion, the best offense one through nine in baseball is the Red Sox. Now, Houston's got those three or four guys. I'll bet on them any day of the week. But one through nine, the Red Sox. And so that's what we saw. That's what we saw last night. Um, we, we had a nice story. Oh, because we have a guy down in New York from the Eagle Tribune. Um, Brock Holt. Brock Holt's the glue of this team. And he wrote the story. He's a glue guy. Uh, most well-liked guy in the organization. From owner to ball boy is Brock Holt. Uh, admired by everyone. Sweetheart of a guy goes unannounced to the hospitals to visit, doesn't bring cameras with them, doesn't ask for stories. Uh, and so what happens? They're in a little bit of a bind. Who do they go to? They go to Brock Holt. He, I mean, he's not as good as Kinsler. Kinsler's not really doing great, but Kinsler is a talent. And who hits for the cycle? Hits for the cycle last night. If, for those of you who went to bed and you should have gone to bed, he hit a home run his last at bat and got the cycle. Um, but I'm a... Uh, there's something about this Red Sox team, and it's been, they started off 17 and two. Then they lost like five out of six, and we said, there we go. <laughs> it's gonna, no. And Alex Cora, you gotta give him credit. He's only been in baseball one year, by the way. He was bench coach for one year. Yeah. Aaron Boone came from the booth. Uh, I, big mistake to hire a guy from the booth without any experience, because what we're, we're seeing it now. This is Red Sox Yankees. Uh, this isn't, you know, this isn't Milwaukee. This is, and I don't want to denigrate Milwaukee because I think their team might be one of the hottest in baseball. But this is Red Sox Yankees, and Boone is managing like someone that doesn't know what he's doing. And guess what? He doesn't know what he's doing yet. I like him. A great guy, classy guy. I think he knows the game. But this is a this is a sport. You got to be ready. The the best part about baseball. That's why I love the game. You're always looking ahead. When the pitch is thrown, you're working over here because you think the pitch is going to, you know, so that's the game. And you're, you're, and Aaron Boone blew it. And they weren't going to win last night, but you send, you know, if they lose five to one or maybe get five to three, show some punch, that team quit yesterday. And they quit because their manager didn't put them in position to have a chance to win the game. Um, it's going to be fireworks here, you know, at the end, for you guys that went to sleep, um, Andrew Benatendi swung at a 3-0 pitch with a 12-1 lead. That's a no-no. Andrew Benatendi scored, uh, sorry, pass ball, went to second base, like took the base when they had an 11-run lead. So apparently some Yankees were ticked at that. So here's what the Yankees got to do. They got to get people into it. Andrew Benatendi, second batter of the game, is going to get a couple thrown at his side. And, and um, now, if Mookie gets on base to start the game, they won't throw at him. But if it's two outs, Andrew Benatendi up in the seventh, sixth inning, he's going to get one right off the rear end, the keister.
Oh, he's going to get it early. It, that is. Well, it might, but but <laughs> not if not if uh, Bats is on base. But the, the point is, um, I think Houston is scary because Houston is fearless. But I wouldn't doubt these Red Sox. You see Evaldi yesterday. I the guy that pitched tonight. We, we haven't really talked about him because he hasn't had a great year. Uh, Porcello, Rick Porcello. Uh, you want him in your corner. I don't want to. I don't want to make it a war reference, foxhole kind of thing. But that's what this guy Priscillo is. I'm a big fan. Uh, their bullpen's healthy. Not that it's a great bullpen. You know, those those middle two innings are the really tough ones. The seventh and eighth inning. Uh, Priscilla's going to give him six tonight. They're going to have to do some. Uh, may, maybe Price. Maybe Price comes in sixth and seventh inning because he can pitch in relief in, in the playoffs. He just can't start. Uh, something about him. He can't handle the pressure. So. Um, I'm, uh, you know, in between all this, I'm at the Patriots game. You know, so we got a lot going on here. Uh, Patriots play Sunday night against Kansas City. And I will tell you, this kid, this Mahomes quarterback for Kansas City, watch out. The real deal, I got a big story coming on him. I just talked to his college coach, Cliff Kingsbury, Texas Tech. They're playing Thursday night. Uh, he called me yesterday for five minutes, and we talked about how everyone missed the boat on this kid. This kid should have been the first pick of the draft. And I told, he said, I told people, he's the next great quarterback. And only one team listened, Kansas City. <coughs> Kansas City moved up 17 spots to get him, 10th pick overall. They gave a first round pick for the next year as well, their first round pick, next year's first round pick, and a third round pick. So they gave up a lot for a kid, and they sat him for a year, which is, that's the new, that's, that's really unheard of. That's the old way of doing it. Remember, we throw these kids at the Wolves. This kid got to watch a pro, not a great quarterback, Alex Smith, play quarterback for a year. Um, this is not a surprise. Patrick Mahomes is, is playing well. Father, major league pitcher, two years for the Red Sox, nine years overall, pitched two for the Red Sox. Wasn't great, a reliever. Um, this kid's good, uh, and uh, but I'm back on the Pats. I, I, the pa Patriots did it. Uh, we doubted them. We doubted them. We doubted them. They looked horrendous. I was there in Jacksonville. One of the worst games I think I'd ever seen them play until they played in Detroit, which was the worst game they ever played. And then Miami comes to town, 3-0, and they just slapped them. Miami came in treating it like where I think we're better than the Patriots. Instead of, okay, the Patriots are going to be playing this game because Belichick's crazy. Brady's crazy. They're not normal human beings, which is why they're still doing this together. Maybe they don't like each other like they did, but they're driven like no other two people that I've been in contact, that I've seen in this industry. And they treated that like life and death. Miami came into town a little arrogant, and they have zero reason to be arrogant. And they get, now guess what, they're three and two. Miami's done. So I'm just telling you, Miami is done. There are nine and seven team, when I say done, eight and eight team, they're not a threat. Not this year, uh, and um, I'm 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 very interested to see uh, the Patriots. This is a big game. I think the Patriots are going to win. I think they're going to have a plan for the kid. The kid likes to roam around, and Belichick does this. He does it to young players, young quarterbacks. He rushes the passer, but then says stop, and make a U, and just make the quarterback get nervous. And that's what happens. First guy, second guy, they don't know what to do and then they run for their life. So he says, don't run after him, because if you run after him, he gets around you. He's such a good athlete, he rolls out. That's where this kid's dangerous, when he's rolling out. Sort of Aaron Rodgers, he's a young Aaron Rodgers. Um, so, a lot going on, Red Sox, Patriots, and, uh, and Yankees. And um, as for my son. And next week, the Celtics. <laughs> oh, you know what? You could make the argument the best team in Boston is the Boston Celtics. I, I don't know if you guys have read, but uh, about six weeks ago, I had a one-on-one -on -one with uh, Brad Stevens and opened up a lot. I got some information that he never gave to anyone because no one asked him. Um, and um, said he had never met Danny Ainge face-to-face -face until he signed the contract. So think about that. I, I figured they had meetings, he flew down. This is a college coach. But they had spoken over the phone, and uh, and they met. They gave him his contract, and he shook Danny's hand. That was the first time they met. 
That's interesting how Ainge believed in him without having face-to-face -face contact. Uh, the coach is the real deal. The team is for real. I'm, talk about excited, I get excited talking about them. I'm, they can beat Golden State. I think Golden State's a little bit of a fat cat right now. I think a little, they get two players that could leave. Um, their contracts are up this year, Thompson and, um, and the nutcase there. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, Draymond to, Green. Yes. He, hell of a player. Uh, but he wants, I'm one of the best players in the league. You're one of the best, you're on the best team in the league. Uh, and you're, you're good, and you're a necessity on a great team. You're, you're, you're the third or fourth peg. But, uh, so we got a lot to be excited about. Uh, you know, we didn't really get to the Bruins, and they showed a lot of guts after that 7-0 win, loss, to come back with two very good wins. So uh, I keep saying, this is like, the, they talk about the greatest generation. You guys know that story. Uh, it's true. That uh, in our lives, the greatest generation was you guys were growing up. Uh, but in sports in Boston, it's right now. So questions? What, what's the health of the two of these players that are here last year? Uh, both of them very good. Okay, I, I'm surprised at how good um, Gordon Hayward. He asked about the injury, the two injured Celtics. Kyrie's knee is 100 percent, apparently. Kyrie's injury, there was a, uh, he had surgery two years before that, there was a wire, and that wire got loose, and they saw it in an MRI, and they cleaned it up, and they say his knee, and it had to come out eventually, uh, they say his knee, that was really the problem with his knee, was the wire, was um, uh, infecting an er two areas of his knee, so that's been cleaned up. Um, the thing is, he doesn't have to, he's got so much help here. Yeah, he does. Um, Rozier, I mean, Rozier's gonna, <coughs> he's the sixth man, I think, or is Marcus Smart the sixth man? What about Marcus Morris? What about Tice? Uh, what about Baines? I mean, their second team probably wins 30 games in the NBA. Their second team, as if it was a starting team. So, so we're gonna, I, I, I am, I, I'm into the NBA more than I've ever been in it before. I'm, I'm talking as much as I was in the early 80s with Bird, McHale, and Parrish. And that to me was the best. This right now is pushing that. Uh, yeah, Larry Bird to my mind is, I get, you know, he, he was my favorite. He's probably one of my all time favorite athletes that I watched before I got into business and then after the business. Uh, just certitude. Brady, I guess you could put right, yeah, I mean look, Brady's even had more success technically, but something about Larry Bird. And I was young, so he got me when I was a kid and that, that sort of sticks with you. More questions. Well, a financial question about uh, these these kids. So many of them are talented. Both they can play football, they can play baseball. Yep. Why do they choose football when financially baseball is so much more lucrative? They have a contract that they don't stand a chance of losing if they get hurt. Right. Whereas in football, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? To their job, they could okay. be traded, or they, or they could just lose their contract. Okay, that's a great question. And I have, I I'm in the middle of it, so yeah, I can contact, I can talk about this. Baseball is so much tougher than than than. And okay, sorry. Football is obviously tougher, but the mental toughness of baseball to be great in baseball is hard. And the ups and downs of baseball, there's nothing like it. Like, I, I've said this before. Now, I can say this because I have a nephew that played pro lacrosse, played for Masconomic, Colby, Cannons, five years, face-off guy. I believe lacrosse is for people that can't hit a curveball. <laughs> and it's a joke, and my nephew played baseball because I helped him, the one that played lacrosse, but then he couldn't hit, and he left. He was afraid to tell me, because this is before my son, my, he's now 28, my son's 22. I used to work with him because I was into baseball and I wanted him to play and he came up to me, Uncle Billy, I'm sorry, I don't want to play baseball anymore. And I was like, what? And uh, you know, my mother, had, my sister had told me he's gonna come talk to me, but play lacrosse. So the point is, baseball is hard and the, the ups and downs are brutal. As I said, it reminds me of golf. 
Uh, mental toughness is as important as anything. You know, my son said this to me. Um, he goes, I have a new appreciation for the guys in the majors. He goes, people look at them in the majors and, hey, look at them. They got 50 million, 60 million. He goes, but I know what they did to get there. It's hard. Um, you know, you're going through bus rides in small towns and, and it's, it's, you've got to be, that's why minor leagues are great. They're a test. They test you. 130, 100, he's, he's going to play eight ball, 140 games next year. Um, and he's going to be playing, they get one day off a month. A month. Uh, it's the job. Because these little towns got to make money. They need games. They can't, they can't give these guys, you know, why do they give the, because the towns that have the teams need to make money. They need 2,000 a night, 3,000 a night. They, if they give these off days, those are one, that's one less day. So football. Uh, football is brutal. Football is vicious. When I, I, a lot of times at the end of the game, for the last two minutes, I get out on the field and I said, these guys are crazy. These guys are crazy. The middle of the field, from the numbers inside where the linebackers are, where Wes Welker and where they, absolutely lunatics, absolute lunatics, lunacy. It is, uh, the, the speed and the power is, uh, I couldn't do it. I, I would die if I got hit once. And uh, so why do they do it? I think football, there's a passion for, when you love football, yeah. It's like Sunday you walk through the tunnel, and these guys that have concussions, and would you do it all over again? Not all of them, but most of them say, yeah, that, that Sunday feeling when you're walking out to the field, you can't, I, I, I wish everyone could feel it. So that's why they do it. The contracts are not guaranteed per se. Um, it's not, but a lot of them, you know, like let's just say you get 30, 40 million, 20 million is guaranteed. 20 million is guaranteed. That's, that's not bad. Now, it's not 100 million, but for the 100 million that they, the baseball player gets, he's playing every day, one day off a month for seven months, and then he's working the other three months. He, he might take a month off. If you're, in the, if you're in the World Series, you get a month off. That's it. I'm not, I'm not making excuses for them, but um, baseball, in my mind, is the toughest sport mentally. Football is brutal. I wouldn't. I would not recommend football. I love watching it, just like we all do. And then, you know, it's funny because we all get upset about these concussions. You know, okay, concussions happen, and we all say, hey, you got to protect the player. Then we start protecting the player. What are you doing? They, whoops, you whoops, let, it go, let them play. So we want it both ways. So that's interesting how this is going to play out because, uh, you know what, protecting the quarterback, you got to do it protecting people that are going out and they don't even see a ball. Now, you, the reason why they do it is you want them to have fear that someone's going to hit them. But uh, I don't like when they mess with people's heads. Yeah. So that's the one thing. When someone hits someone in the head, in hockey, in basket, anywhere, you're messing with their life. You're messing with their family. Because this is something, uh, you know, Ted Johnson, who I'm close with, former Patriot, um, still has headaches, uh, said it's the collision with the fullback. He said, the last two years, I just knew it was coming, and it was like I hated it. The fullback, who's a crazy guy usually. Fullbacks are crazy. They're not, no, they don't carry the ball. They hit people. And he knew that guy was going to come through the hole, and his job was to hit the middle linebacker, the Mike linebacker. And so... Um, yeah, we have Junior Seo too, is a great example yeah. of that. Yeah, it took a lot of hits, man, a lot of hits. And, uh, and we don't know what these guys go through. I, I will tell you this, Ted Johnson who I became friendly with after he left. And he lived in an apartment in Boston, and, I, and, and we just became close, and he said, yeah, come on in, and we'll go out for lunch. I go in to his apartment. It's uh, right on Tremont Street. It was in a beautiful place. And I go in, it's all dark. And I can't stand bright light. Yeah, and I said, what's up? He goes, yeah, I, can't, it's, I got a headache. I don't want to, and I, I didn't, it didn't strike me. It didn't hit me. And I go, and I said to him, I go, you know, Ted, you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> He should have killed me. You got to toughen up, bro. And he goes, you don't understand. And I didn't understand. And now I, I sort of do. Uh, and I didn't mean toughen up physically, but like you got to, no, these guys, their their heads are, it's not good. I don't know if you heard the post-game interview last night after the Red Sox game. Which one? 
Pedro. Yes. Talking about Brock Holt and what he went through for a whole year because yeah. he had the concussion and then vertigo afterwards. Mm -hmm. And like Pedro was saying, for him to come back and do what he did last night, uh, Pedro was just so happy for the kid. Yeah. No question. Great point. And that was, that was seven months he was bothered yeah. by the one concussion. Yeah. He slid in, hit, I think his head hit the side of the, uh, you know, and it didn't, it looked innocent. It didn't even look like a concussion. And, uh, and vertigo and and they thought his career might be over. Yeah, over one hit. So a football player. I mean, just think about it. Uh, um, yeah, I respect football. I respect all these guys. To be honest with you, I, I sort of know what they go through. I know what they do in preparation. My son sort of is at the infancy stage, but it's get up at six thirty a.m. It's run. It's diet. They just can't go out and have beers and, and eat steak and cake like I can. You know, or like you guys do all the time. I like Mickey Mantle. Mickey Mantle, that's a whole other <laughs> issue. Or Babe Ruth. <laughs> yeah, in those days. that was part of the deal. I mean, imagine if yeah. Babe Ruth or Mickey Mantle, you now Mickey Mantle was a specimen, but if yeah. these guys took care of their bodies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Mickey Mantle, are we talking 750, 800 homers the real way? Uh, Babe yeah, Ruth? If he hadn't hurt his knee, I mean. Yeah, know. I mean, Babe Ruth. You know, let's be honest, he looked like the last six years, he looked like he was, you know, pregnant, you know? Um, but we do have a lot of good, straight stuff to talk about. The Red Sox are, are legitimate. I'm, I'm a fan, and I am a fan of the team. Uh, I'm a big fan of Cora. Um, Cora's got away. He's got away. And he was, he was, we're okay. You know, because a lot of the media was going after him on, uh, after the second game. And we're okay. No, no, this is, you know, we've had this, but this happens, you lose baseball games. And the other team sometimes plays better. So it's how you respond. That showed me a lot yesterday. Uh, I, I, Thursday night, I don't, I don't think Thursday's going to happen. I think Sox are going to win it tonight. <laughs> I think they're going to win it tonight. Yankees are, I mean, that, that was a beating. Now the key is, Yankee Stadium is loud. People have said this, it was louder than Fenway. It was. But you got to the Yankees in New York haven't done anything, you know. They, they, compared to Boston, it's you know this is they need this, the Yan New York. They need the the Yankees need this. They're tired of the Red Sox. They're tired of Boston. They're tired of Tom Brady. They don't want to hear that. They're tired of the Celtics. So that's what this is about. Uh, the Yankees get off to a quick start. Yep. Hit that homer in the first inning. The only thing David Price couldn't do was don't let Aaron Judge hit a homer in the first inning. That's it. Ooh. Home run. You woke up, you woke him up. So yesterday was, last night was incredible because Evaldi shut them down. Shut them down again. Third inning, two guys on, get out of the inning. Remember that? Oh, it was a bunt. It looked like it was going to be first and second. They got a break. He was out. That Angel Hernandez, the umpire, Who's a disaster? He had a bad night. Oh, he's a, no, he's been a disaster for <laughs> yeah. five, six years. You know, he's someone said he was suing based on you know nationality. People, it's it, they're racist. No, no, you're horrible. You are horrible. <laughs> now he's a home on play, home plate umpire tonight. So <laughs> good luck. You know that you're going to see balls called and you know. Um, so it's going to be fun. I'm 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 into this. The Red Sox and the Yankees. I'm into baseball. I'm going to be honest with you. Cleveland legit. Astros scary. That is one team. That's a dynasty in the making. If the Red Sox and Yankees didn't have $250 million spent, I would say Houston is gonna, could run this league for five years. The Red Sox and Yankees have the resources to fix that, meaning fix what the Astros are going to try to do. Like, are the Yankees going to get Bryce Harper? Uh, well, they have an opening. Yeah. Yes, probably. And they have the money, to be honest with you. They, they're, they were under two hundred million, which is that doesn't happen often. You gotta give the Yankees credit. And this is why Cashman, when George Steinbrenner passed away, George's son basically said, Okay, we're gonna do things a little differently. We're not gonna overreact. Let's build do what the Red Sox did. The, this Red Sox run that they've been on here for five or six years, this started through their system. Bogarts, Betts, Benintendi. Jackie Bradley. These guys were developed. These were, uh, now they haven't developed a lot of pitchers per se, but they developed guys that they traded for sale. So 
The point is, develop players, develop talent. I mean, I, I will tell you this, my son, who's on the Yankees, in their system, they've been told, you know, just do well, you never know where you're going, because the Yankees always trade prospects for good players. So, if it's funny, at his batting practice, I would go a couple of times, there'd be scouts from other teams, major league teams, scouts watching my son's team hit batting practice. And I end up going over to the guy, I go, what are you guys all doing here? He goes, because trade deadline's coming up and these guys are all available. Other teams, maybe a couple, but no, the Yankees, you, they, they breed talent and they trade it for good, real good players. But I'm gonna give the Yankees credit. This team is young, and this team, they've, these de they've developed a lot of these guys. Second base, third base. Um, Aaron Judge, classy, one of the classiest. He's, he's Jeter. I like him. He's, the, he's Derek Jeter. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's tough to hate Jeter, really. This Aaron Judge, if you go back to the fight, remember, earlier in the season, it was him who broke it up. I mean, he, if he started throwing a few punches, this thing could have still be going on, that fight, you know? Um, <laughs> But a class guy, my son says that they have videos, and the videos show, uh, the Yankees show videos, and Aaron Judge is often speaking to players in the minor league system about what it takes to be a Yankee, what you go through. We do things better. We, we, we're more disciplined. And there is a Yankee way. That's, it's like the Patriot way. There's a definite Yankee way. Problem is a lot of these guys get traded eventually. But questions? Tampa Bay next year. Baseball? Yes. Okay, they're, uh, you got to give that team credit. 90 wins. Now, that 90 wins, here's the thing, gets in the playoffs five out of the last seven years. And they didn't even get a sniff. So, Tampa Bay, who gave the Red Sox fits, by the way, mm -hmm. um, without any superstar talent, remember, they traded their third baseman who was their probably last superstar. Uh, and these guys are younger than young. These guys are, their average age was 23 and a half, which is, the Yankees are young and they're 26. Uh, this is, uh, this is gonna be an interesting team because uh, it's so hard. Toronto, we thought, we thought Toronto coming into the year was gonna be a team to beat. Uh, I'm a big fan of the way Tampa basically has decided we're going to rebuild, and I believe in two years they're going to maybe go sign a guy or two. They don't, they don't sign four like the Red Sox. They'll sign one or two. Um, but we're talking, when we talk developing talent, I put Tampa up there. They've, they've voted the best uh, right now, best organization in baseball developing talent. Uh, the problem is, in the end, the money, it's, you know, the their players leave. Um, you know, Houston, can Houston keep their guys? It's gonna be interesting. You know, Altuve got his, got his pay, Career's getting his, but you know, Bregman, he's a 25, $30 million guy. Um, George Springer, is George Springer the best one of them all? He's a 25, 30, he's a UConn, by the way, right. University of Connecticut. Um, great guy, love, I love that team. I'm a big Houston fan. So, I may be going if they, if the Red Sox play them, I might go out there. I'm close with the, uh, I know, got to know him a little bit, the, uh, the coach of the Houston Texans, Bill O'Brien. He's from Andover. Went to St. John's Prep. Great guy. Ryan Bridges got on the court. Eduardo? Yeah. Yeah. Did he ever end up anywhere? Did we, anybody pick? No, not Eduardo. Um, they let him go to bring Pierce in at the beginning of the season. Yes, no, he's uh Oh, and Ramirez. Ramirez. Yeah, Ramirez. He's, uh, no, he's been, uh, no one picked him up. Nobody picked him up. No, um, and part of his issue was his contract, if he got so many at-bats, he had another year thrown in. He had to pay him another $22 million, so. But uh, he's a little bit of a wild card. Uh, I would have brought him in if I needed a bat for August and September, and that's it. Like meaning playoffs were, because he can hit. He's, you know, we saw it. He, he's, he goes through runs where he can carry a team for three days. Uh, but no, out of baseball, and his career is over. 
We've got, yeah. got a funny attitude. Yeah, different. You know, different he, he appears often to be lazy. But he's not, I'll tell you, he's a hard worker. I got to a good, good father. I saw him at the park, his kids. I, I'm, Hanley was, Hanley, no, Hanley early in his career, when he was coming up through the sock system, was, a, was trouble. It was trouble. It was getting him in at night, making sure he gets to the field. Um, and uh, very talented. You know, he put on a lot of weight. He became a power hitter. He came up as a skinny, incredible fielder. He was like, great hitter but a great fielder too. Uh, but different kid, and it was tough to get to him. Uh, you know, never won really anything. Had a good year with the Dodgers, where they went to like the, the World Series. Um, the Red Sox uh, had the one, it was it 2013? So yeah, so I mean, he's had a couple of great years, but he was a borderline Hall of Fame talent that just never really came through. I'm not saying he was, but he, had that sort of, uh, was on that track. Des Bryant, same way. Nobody's picked Des him Bryant. up. Des Bryant. Nobody picked him up. Look, I'm, I'm going to write a column tomorrow about um, the New York Giants, Odell Beckham. So Ode Odell Beckham trashed Eli Manning and his coach. And he can do that now. He just signed a contract. Talking about contracts. Guaranteed $65 million. <clears throat> So now what he's done, see, football's different. That's why Belichick is who he is. Now, he doesn't give any information out. It stinks for us. It stinks for the fans. They want more. His press conferences, he don't say anything. But what Odell Beckham did would never happen on the Patriots. That's what blows up a team. So this new coach, Odell Beckham, has just basically killed this year for him. Um, Odell Beckham is about Odell. He's, he's, I'll say it before. He's played 53 games in his career. I'll say 45 games he's done something, you go, oh my God, unbelievable. Oh my God, but guess what? It's won 22 out of 53 games, his team. So, so as great as he is, as entertaining as he is, he has not a lot of bearing on winning. He has, does have bearing, but not a lot. Uh, in the end, it's quarterback, <coughs> it's defense, it's coaching. Uh, if he's so upset, he should have not signed a contract and he could have gone in wherever he wanted. See, what happens is he's got his money now, and you don't do what he did. You just don't do it. In the NFL, you don't do it these days. Uh, you need everyone on the same page. It's 53 players, 13 coaches, 16 staffers. And in New England, everyone's on the same page. As former offensive line coach who was here two years, Dave DeJulia, whatever, however you say it, he said, he told me this at the Super Bowl when the Patriots beat Seattle. He said, I've never seen an organization in lockstep like this team. Belichick comes out with a plan, and nobody quarrels with it. Now, there's some quarreling to get to the plan, and Belichick will take input, but he goes, everyone's on the same page. This is what we're going to do. See you Sunday. And he goes, it works. Now, he gets away with it because he's Bill Belichick. It's tough. It's tough to be Bill Belichick. It's tough to be like that, you know, if in this in this era when guys have the money and they have the attitude it's not easy it's not easy that's why these teams are good for a year and then they disappear I mean Philadelphia what's up Philly come on you did a lot of talking last year you beat the Patriots you you, you, you remember one of the two of the players said Patriots don't have fun that's what the Phillies mm -hmm. uh, offensive guard said I don't know all right so wh what about they're back again. Now they've won two in a row. They're, they're three and two. They're literally, they beat Kansas City. Guess who the best team is in the AFC again? It's the Patriots, which is I've already got my column done if they win. Now if they lose, if they lose, I'm in trouble. But Lastly, yep. if anyway, uh, will we ever know what happened to Butler? Because I think uh -huh. that uh, that was Belichick showing his spitefulness uh, in keeping him out of the game, it cost Brady another ring, cost the team, the money, and everything else. That goes How about the fans? Did it cost game? the fans? Of, yeah, okay, so yeah. what if, what if, um, hor what if he had a horrible week of practice? What if he said something to a coach, you don't know what you're talking about. If your name wasn't Belichick, you wouldn't be in this league. 
What if he said that to an assistant coach? What if he said, what if they said to him, you better turn your act around or you're not going to play? And he said, screw you, you need me. What if that was done? We'll never know. What if it, well, what if it was, what if it happened? Mm. What if that happened? Do you play him? What are you telling other players if you let that guy get away with that? No, you would say, what, what we'd say is get the championship. I don't, Butler had a lousy year. Yeah. Right, right yeah. now, by the way, they rank all the starting cornerbacks. I'm not going to say Butler's horrible. This year, he ranks like 26th out of 32. Um, Who's he with them? He's with Tennessee. Tennessee. And they're, you know, they're, but right now, the NFL is crazy. I, picking the NFL is like, you know, it's a crapshoot. It's really flipping a coin. And I, uh, I've had a couple good weeks. I had another good week. I'm sort of getting a feel. What, what I'm realizing is the NFL, we're back to where we were last year. I thought all these other teams were going to get better, and they all, they're not. So I'm going back to my old way because I started believing these teams. I believed in Jacksonville. I believe Jacksonville, another thing, they got this one player, Jalen Ramsey, and they can't shut him up. And football, you need everyone on the same page, as this coach said about the Patriots. Do you think Manning will throw three Yes. Eli Manning, I think, has been – so here's, here's my Eli Manning stat. I'll ask you this question. Eli Manning has been in the league 13 – this is 13th or 14th year. He's had two Super Bowl runs where he won Super Bowls, and he won MVP of those Super Bowls. So outside of those two years, how many playoff games has he won? I'm going to give you three numbers. Seven, four – and zero. He's won zero. Yeah. Think about that. So he, he hasn't had a career like this, though. Right. And but but you know that pass where the ball stuck to the guy's yeah. helmet, we still haven't figured that one out, how the glue stuck in his helmet. But um <laughs> but Eli yeah, Eli isn't in the same class as his brother, but he won two Super Bowls and he was the MVP twice. He's gonna be in the Hall of Fame. I guess both against us. Yes. That's a great line by Belichick. Did you see the, the, the two bills? So it was a, a documentary on Parcells and yes. Belichick. Yeah. And they, they're looking, they're in New York, and it was great. I'd recommend seeing it if you have de on demand. But Belichick and Parcells are looking at the trophies with the Giants, and Belichick says, those are the two we won, meaning <laughs> Bill. And then he looks at the other two, and those are the two we gave them. <laughs> I still have nightmares about Eli being tackled by the whole team. The and whole get, team. And getting away. And yeah. Getting away. Yeah. yeah. They should have called in the grasp. What are they doing? What are they having that call? All right, guys, thanks for having me again. Appreciate it.